say today I'm a harbor seal swimming in Boston Harbor. Every 100 feet I swim, I would hit six pieces of trash. And the next 100 feet I swim, another six pieces. And say tomorrow I get to be a dolphin swimming in the Pacific. And I cruise into Marina Del Rey right near Los Angeles. There, for every 100 feet I swim, I would hit 33 pieces of trash. And that's unacceptable. We're killing our oceans and our marine life from microbes to megafauna with trash. Up to 15 million tons of it are going into our oceans every year and killing through ingestion, entanglement, and the transfer of toxic, persistent organic pollutants like endocrine disruptors that mutate cells. We need to clean the ocean. And I believe we can clean the ocean. Now, you've all heard about the garbage patches twice the size of Texas floating in the middle of our oceanic gyres. This is where media and science have focused our attention. And they say it's, they're impossible to clean because they're so vast and so remote. But I believe we can clean the ocean. Our focus has been in the wrong place. Instead of looking thousands of miles offshore in the middle of our oceans, let's look at our land-sea interface, especially where there's urban sprawl, our harbors, our rivers, our waterfronts. This is where trash first enters the marine environment. And this is where we should focus our cleanup efforts. It's the most efficient place to pick up trash. We can get it while it's still whole, a whole bottle, a whole bag, or a whole food wrapper, before these items break up into millions and millions of pieces of microplastic swirling around the center of our ocean gyres. 80% of all marine debris is trash that is blown, washed, or dumped into our harbors. And here's one way it gets there. This is a storm drain here in Boston Harbor in the Charlestown Navy Yard. And it is spitting out trash at the rate of a bag, a wrapper, or a cigarette every three seconds. And this is happening in every rainstorm. And this is just one storm drain in a watershed with thousands spitting out trash at the rate of one piece every three seconds. This is happening at every rainstorm in every city, in every country, all over the world. And this shows the magnitude of the problem. The problem is so big that marine debris has created three new oceanographic features in our urban and coastal waters. Beer can reefs, rivers of trash, and local garbage patches. For the last 50 years, off every publicly accessible dock and wharf in New England and beyond, a new reef's been growing, a beer can reef. We can also call these plastic cup and food wrapper reefs. This one is off the docks of downtown Newport, Rhode Island. And this trash is covering the seafloor. In fact, it is physically smothering the marine environment. Whatever these reefs are made of, cans or cups, this marine debris is potentially leaching chemicals and transferring toxic, persistent organic pollutants to our marine life. These reefs pose a clear and present danger to our underwater environment, and we need to keep them from happening and clean them up. Now, of course, these reefs are made up of plastics and metals and materials that sink. A lot of marine debris floats, which brings us to our second new oceanographic feature, the rivers of trash that are flowing in our urban waters. These are made up of foam and plastic and some building materials and some items I don't want to mention. 
We've done a study to see just how much trash is in our urban waters and compare that to how much trash is in our ocean gyres. So remember, as a dolphin in Marina del Rey, I was hitting 33 pieces of trash every 100 feet I swam there? That's because the average concentration of trash in Marina del Rey is 282,000 pieces of trash per square kilometer. And that is well over 10 times the average concentration of trash in the North Pacific gyre. And the same thing is happening here in the North Atlantic. Philly, New York, and Boston all come in at between twice and over three times the average concentration of trash that's in the North Atlantic gyre. And this shows how important it is to focus our efforts and work at the land-sea interface. Local garbage patches are the third new oceanographic feature created by marine debris. Our rivers of trash, as they, they will flow out of our harbors, and they will either double back and deposit their trash on our beaches, or they will create and feed local garbage patches. We can find them using numerical models showing us where tides and currents converge. And they're full of trash. This one in Vineyard Sound, you can see the trash in there. This one is in, off of Portland, Maine. And it's part of the largest and most pervasive of the garbage patches in the Gulf of Maine. You can see there's a balloon going by. We've got multiple buckets multiple bottles, oil bottles, and beverage bottles. And this is just one mat that is one of many, many mats making up the several square mile area of this garbage patch that we've seen every time we've sailed between 10 and 15 miles offshore of Portland. Looking at these floating garbage patches, you can see the inherent difficulty in cleaning them up. There is a lot of organic matter, seaweed and plankton, and there's a lot of trash, and we need to separate them. The organic matter needs to stay in the sea. Here we are on our research vessel, cleaning up one of the mats in the Gulf of Maine. And you can see the challenge and the fact that it is somewhat inefficient because we need to separate this leave the organic matter in the ocean, and get the trash, especially the plastics, out. This is only going to get harder, because these garbage patches will eventually get transported out into our ocean gyres. And during that transport, the plastics will photodegrade into smaller and smaller pieces. So why do we throw our plastics away as part of our trash? On the front end, we spend billions of dollars and drill in the deepest part of our oceans for oil, for fuel, but also to make our plastics. We go to war for oil that goes into making our plastics. And we spend a large proportion of our personal income on items that are made of plastic. But what do we do with our plastic? We use it, we throw it away, and we treat it as worthless. What if this plastic bag was really a gold bag? I would be very strong to hold it like this. But if this was a gold bag, if all of our plastic bags were gold, we would keep them, we'd reuse them, and we would never let them blow away. The paradigm needs to change. Let's start thinking of trash, especially plastic trash, as something that has value. And let's recognize that trash, especially plastic trash, has significant negative value in our important and beautiful marine environment. There are ways to do this, and we can do this. It starts with prevention. 
And the first step in prevention is, do not let this happen. Please don't be the person that balances your bottle on the top of this overflowing trash can. This doesn't count as a trash can any longer. So it starts with personal responsibility. Let's reduce the amount we use in the first place and take care of the trash that we do create. And then there's a municipal responsibility side. And let's encourage our landowners and municipalities to provide adequate bins, trash and recycling, and clean them at a rate that makes sense for the amount an area is used. Let's encourage our municipalities to invest in solar compactors. These are online, and they'll tell the municipality when they're about to be full, saving time and money. Let's encourage bigger and better recycling programs. And let's encourage our local businesses to use 100% recycled and 100% recyclable packaging, especially for our takeaway food containers. The technology exists. Let's use it. Let's clean our streets every day. And let's put physical barriers on all of our storm drains, the horizontal and the vertical ones. Let's invest in waste to energy. Sweden takes 94% of their waste and puts it through recycling or waste to energy. They are a net importer of trash. They buy trash from Norway. Like they pay Norway money for Norway's trash. And they use that to power and heat homes in their communities. Let's take plastics that aren't recyclable now and put them through a gasification process. The product here is oil that can be used in engines or that can be used in feedstock for future plastic components. And if the cost ratio isn't quite right for some of these ideas, Let's separate our plastics and landfill them for future use until they do have more value. This would be like our own oil well of the future. And finally, let's deliver effective and inspiring prevention through education programs that make reduce, reuse, recycle simply a way of life, like putting on your seatbelt or wearing a bike helmet. Let's create adults of the future for whom protecting the ocean is as natural as protecting themselves. Now, there is a lot of trash already in the ocean. And so we do want to focus on restoration. And that starts with shoreline cleanup, beaches, waterfronts, riverfronts. It's so important because this is where it's actually easy to pick up this trash. And whether you're part of a group, a big group that fills dumpsters in a huge cleanup in one day, or you go out every day with your dog in an extra baggie and you pick up just a few pieces, it all makes a difference. It's all so important. We invest in street cleaning, so let's invest in harbor cleanup too. Boston, Chicago, New York all have trash boats, harbor cleanup trash boats. And they're getting a lot of trash out of the harbors, and they are definitely making a difference. Now, we are going to have to clean up those beer can reefs. And the safest and most effective way to do that is with an ROV, a remotely operated vehicle. An ROV equipped with a manipulator, a little gripper in front, can work 24 hours a day in cold and contaminated water, in high current and low visibility. And most importantly, unlike divers, an ROV will not stir up the sediment. And that's important in our urban harbors where these beer can reefs are found, because often that sediment contains PCBs and heavy metals. Now, we said that it is challenging and somewhat ineffective to clean the garbage patches, even the local ones. But we can 
concentrate on some important and sensitive areas, like the Stellagen Bank and other marine protected areas. And our organization has invented a device to do this. It's a low bycatch marine debris net called the baleen basker. And our goal is to separate the organic matter, which gets left in the sea, who needs it, and we get the trash out. We test that by hanging an intern from the end of our spinnaker pole, <laughs> and they feed the baleen basker with a measured sample of trash and organic matter. Our results so far are we're getting 92% recovery rate of trash and a 48% reduction in organic matter. Our goal for the summer is to test some new versions of the basker in the garbage patches of the Gulf of Maine. And our long-term goal is to scale it up, put it on commercial fishing boats so they can fish for plastic. The actions we take to clean the ocean today will reverberate for many future generations. Your trash may be gold. The solution is where the land meets the sea. And every bit matters. Let's go clean the ocean. Thank you.